president, president, send them in guns a blazing or send them home. It's that simple. You're not going to please everybody, so stop trying to pre please the right and the left. It's not going to happen. Do what is right. Or do what you really want to do. Don't just take it from me. I got a call on the radio program today I want you to listen to. Oh, Glenn, I am so angry. I could just sit. If I had time to sit at the White House every day and yell at the president, I would. I have three sons who serve in the military. My husband is still on active duty. One of my sons is on the border of Afghanistan. This Friday will be the 50th anniversary of losing my brother in a contract of flight on a mountain in it. If anybody understands why we need 40,000 troops in Afghanistan, it's me. My older brother, who's buried just two spaces away from my younger brother at West Point, it's Dan McChrystal's cost me. I have more ponies in this race than most people do. I faxed a room one day to tell him, please, would you send to the troops? I mean, Dan McChrystal took two months to write this report, and the president just dithers around when people like me, who've already lost family members, my dad served on active duty for 25 years. I've already sacrificed and will continue to sacrifice. If you're not going to let them win, bring them home. You know, Mr. Uh, Mr. Barack Obama, President Obama's, um, I don't know if it's his art team, his uh, propaganda team, but they imaged him as Abraham Lincoln. What an insult to Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln was bold. He was truthful. The Emancipation Proclamation, oh, that was bold. The Civil War, that was bold. Sticking with his commanders on the field. That was bold. He was despised by the American people at the beginning of the Civil War because he listened to his commanders and let them fight. He couldn't get them to fight to win. So he would fire them and replace them, and they wouldn't fight. And then he'd replace that one, and they wouldn't fight until he found Grant. Barack Obama is the exact opposite of this man. The great deliberator, not the great decider or liberator. Our troops need their president to lead. They need to know that America has their back. They need hope. They need change. Right now, man, I'm getting that. Evidenced is the, in the news of the troop morale reaching new lows. It doesn't help when your commander in chief is more worried about finding out what caused the actions of the Fort Hood dirtbag terrorist rather than calling him what he is a terrorist. It also doesn't help that our soldiers see Washington using them as just another way to tax the rich and give to the poor. Let me make it very, very clear where I stand on this issue. Unless the President of the United States allows his military commanders on the ground to make the decisions or fire those military commanders and replace them with other military commanders and then give them everything they ask for to win, then I believe it is time to call this war over and bring our troops home. We are putting our troops, our brothers, our sisters, our nephews, our nieces into a meat grinder for no reason that I can think of anymore. Let me go a step further. I have family in the military. I've had to promise my sisters, their mothers, that the government would never ever put them in harm's way without a, a very good reason and without backing them all the way. Oh, I was tough on President George Bush at the time as well until we did the surge. It was touch and go for me looking at my sisters in the eye and looking at my nephews in the eye. I have to tell you, I can no longer make that promise with this administration. With this Congress, you should be ashamed of yourself. As a dad, as an uncle, as an American, if this is the way our military is going to be treated, I can't stand by. The Navy SEALs? Navy SEALs today, you know the guys, um, the, uh, the great Navy SEALs that uh, found the most wanted terrorists? Remember when they, remember they um, uh, captured the mastermind for the murder of the Blackwater? Remember the guys hanging from the bridge? Remember that? Those Navy SEALs? They have, um, they captured him. They're now facing criminal charges. Criminal charges. Um, the SEALs now apparently are accused of assault. They're, um, they're accused of giving this guy 
uh, fat lip. Military wanted to give the Navy SEALs a black mark on their record. They said, excuse me, assault? A terrorist hung people from a bridge? We gave them a fat lip, excuse me? They demanded that the military put up or shut up. They demanded that they be court-martialed in the open rather than punished in the dark. I stand with you, Navy SEALs. We also have a member of Congress, John Murtha, one of the most corrupt, one of the most corrupt members of Congress. He, is, he accused the Marines of cold-blooded murder in Iraq. Do you remember that? The Marines were killed, or cleared. John Murtha, what did he do? He didn't even apologize. Doesn't even have, in his arrogance, he doesn't even apologize. Doesn't have to. Mm -mm. Until politicians don't play politics with how to fund the war, until we have the courage to call the Fort Hood killer a terrorist, until we treat our Navy SEALs with the respect they deserve, until people like John Murtha are fired from Congress, until our CIA members are backed up for doing what we ask them to do, I cannot, in good conscience, encourage my nephew to re-enlist. He called me and asked me, Uncle Glenn, what do I do? I cannot give him my word that this country will stand behind him. That is a decision that every family has to make, every soldier has to make for themselves. I hope we see this president and this Congress. I hope we see them open up their eyes. I hope they are kept up every single night with the thought that they are asking men and women to leave their lives, their families, because they have been asked to by the American public. Anything less than making them your top priority is unforgivable. I will wait for a commander in chief to get his priorities in order. But for now, I'll say it again. The people we ask to fight and die must be this nation's first priority.